Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to my 1000 subscriber special here on the History and Saber Suites, the channel where I talk about HEMA, history and swords. Now this video is about the Austro-Hungarian M1869 Cavalry Sabre. I've got a trooper's version and an officer's version here and we are going to take a deep look, deep dive into these swords today. But before we do that, let me just say a big, big thank you for all of you who've subscribed and supported the channel so far. I only started the channel in late March of 2020, just after the pandemic had hit, and I thought, let's just do this YouTube thing now or never. And so I did, and here we are one year later. Over 1,000 of you have to have subscribed to my channel, and I'm really grateful, really happy about that. And I'm also excited about the future of this channel. So stay tuned and have a look at those swords together now. So I have put away the officer's saber so we can have a better look at the trooper's one because this is the standard model that was, you know, made an issue to the made for an issue to the troopers, the cavalry troopers to actually use. And so we're going to have a look at this first. Now, starting from the guard, this is a simple ball guard, as you can see. And what it has, it has these reinforced edges. Um, they are either rolled from the sheets of steel that's uh, that's making up the guard, or they are welded on, I'm not sure. Um, I believe they are welded on because you can see some kind of a, a seam there. But this is something that I'm not sure about. In any case, these rolled edges give the guard a lot, a lot more strength and makes it a, mo a lot more durable. And what it also has, let's just put away the scabbard and look at it later. It has these um, double sword knot slots, which are very typical for Austrian and Austro-Hungarian swords of this period. You can see it on the infantry officer's saber as well. And it also has these hold perforations. And as you can see, they are also symmetrical, just like the guard itself. Um, one here in the middle and then three to the sides. Um, so seven in total. Now, um, let's have a look at the front of the guard. As you can see, there is a reinforced, um, you know, raised section here that's also um, there to make the guard more durable. You also see this on training swords, antiques and modern ones. So this reinforced middle bits where the um, shoulder of the blade hits the guard and then the tang goes through the, through the grip. This helps really um, toughen the guard and, and, you know, secure it and make it less prone to damage in this specific area. Now, another thing they did, and they didn't introduce this on on this model, but the, it was also present on earlier ones, but it has this raised um, bit here, uh, almost like, like a langet that hugs the shoulder of the blade. And also this is the place where they usually put in the weapon number and troop designations as well. Now this here says weapon number 308 and on the other side where there's usually the troop the unit markings or designations. Unfortunately, this has broken off at some point, so it's impossible to tell which unit this sword originally belonged to. And the scabbard doesn't help as well because uh, the numbers doesn't the number doesn't match up with the number printed on the scabbard or stamped on the scabbard. So it's impossible to tell which unit this sword served in. But anyway, now on this side, moving on to the blade. It also, uh, at this at this Ricasso section here, it's the place where you see the maker's stamp and it's ST Stribeni. So it's a company called Stanislaus Stribeni from central Vienna. They were a good quality cutler and later around 1900, they uh, were granted uh, the rank of, or designation of purveyors to the court. And yeah, they were a good quality maker and this came from their uh, factory. Now moving on to the blade itself, this is the typical and iconic Austro-Hungarian cavalry blade that was already on the immediate predecessor model, the 1861. And the design, the you know the special design feature of this is a flat cross section on the inside of the blade, so the left side, it's called the inside or cart side, and a deep fuller on the outside of the blade as you can see, which is, you know, a very standard fuller running from the Ricasso two thirds up the blade. But as I said, it's flat on the other side. 
it's a very interesting and iconic and design is also kind of menacing and I find it really intriguing and attractive to be honest. This a broad blade with no fuller and you've got the fuller on the other side. I think it looks great. And then you've got uh, to the point, it's, it's a standard spear point as you can see, which means that the point is central to the uh, direction of the blade. So good for thrusting, blade is also good for cutting. It's a, a very nice and, you know, um, kind of middle of the road design, which is good at cutting, good at thrusting. And it's also a very broad blade, which, you know, aids in cutting. So yeah, onto measurements. Now the blade is 82 and a half centimeters. It might have been shortened just a tad, but I can't really tell for sure. It's usually more around 83, 84. But anyway, this is 82 and a half and it's 38 millimeters wide at the Ricasso. That varies just a little bit between, you know, 36 millimeters, 38, 39 sometimes, but you know, usually it's around 36 millimeters, which is quite broad. And as you can see on the B-roll here, I did a quick comparison with the British 1796 pattern, Cavalry Trooper Sabre on top and below the 1821 or 45 blade for on the uh, Royal Artillery Officer Sabre that I've got, just to give you an idea of how it looks beside those Sabres. Now onto the differences between this and the Officer Sabre. Now the overall shape is identical. As you can see, it's symmetrical. It has the same rolled edges for reinforcement of the edges. It has the same, you know, rounded back strap with ears. Uh, that's also a feature to note, the ears on Austro-Hungarian sabers of this period um, are more towards the guard than towards the pommel, so not in the middle as some other nations. And where, whereas the trooper's version here has, you know, the, the rivet, the rivet uh, visible on the ear, the, tr uh, the officer's version has a hidden rivet uh, because that's a bit more sleek and, you know, a bit more elegant. That's something that was often done on officer's swords with ears. And yeah, other than that, it's also nickel plated, the officer's one, which is also a very usual feature, a very, you know, standard feature on Austro-Hungarian officer's swords. Makes it easier to maintain. It's a lot more, a lot less prone to rust. And that was practically uh, not standard on, on the trooper's ones, but you do find some, you know, private purchase trooper's ones or, um, you know, other, uh, NCOs, trooper swords, or whatever you, well, what have you. Um, some of those are nickel plated, but the standard model never was. So um, this is the trooper's version. And the really big difference is in the decoration or the design of the perforations. Now the trooper's one has these hole perforations and is otherwise a flat sheet of steel, as you can see. And the officer's one, let's put the trooper aside, has these floral decorations, which are very typical for Austro-Hungarian and, Aust and earlier Austrian cavalry officers, sabers, and kind of similar to the 1821 pattern heavy cavalry saber, the British one, very similar in design. And yeah, you have this design on earlier patterns of saber, the 1845, the 1850, the 1858. Um, the 1861 is a little bit of a different story. I'll touch upon that in a second and the M1904, the final one that came out uh, in 1904 and was introduced in 1908, has also got this floral decoration. So very constant uh, design choice that they um, did on the officer's sabers for the cavalry. So yeah, now um, let's just briefly look at the officer's saber. I think I'm gonna make a separate video just about this one because it's kind of interesting. Um, it has, the same kind of design with the fuller on the outside and the flat cross section on the inside, kind of cool. And other than that, the main difference is also the officer's version, of course, has the grip wire as well, which is almost always indicative of an officer's sword. I do want to talk about uh, the guard design again, because this is the standard pattern for decoration. So this floral design that you have here was the standard. Um, if you ordered an officer's sword, 
this is the kind of design that you would get. But if you paid a little bit more, you could get all kind of wild variations uh, that you know ranges from a coat of arms right here. It could have been a double-headed eagle. It could have been you know um, a Saint George, of course, the patron saint of the cavalry, or uh, uh, a Saint Barbara, the patron saint of the artillery, I believe. So you can have these large uh, coats of arms or symbols here, and also you know gilded, blued, engraved, etched, whatever you wanted on the blade. Um, as an officer, if you could pay for it, you could get it, uh, or presentation swords, what have you. But this is the standard decoration, standard pattern. But you do get some that have this, you know, emblem, some sort of emblem, larger emblem here in the middle. So yeah, um, I'll put away the officer's one and focus a little bit more on the trooper's one because we haven't yet looked at the scabbard. Now the scabbard is a pretty standard design um, with a mouthpiece, a separate mouthpiece that is secured via these two screws, which are both present on this example. And you've also got a very typical Austro-Hungarian thing, which is a, you know, a fixed suspension ring a lower suspension ring on top and another ring on the side which is also fixed and was introduced uh, via its predecessor model the M1861 cavalry saber and in the same year it was also carried over to the infantry so the infantry officer saber also has this you know fixed ring on top fixed ring on the side kind of configuration and this is also present on the 1869 cavalry saber that we have here and was also still present on the later 1904 saber as well. So typical Austro-Hungarian thing, fixed ring on the side, fixed ring on top, um, and that's how you wear it. Now, another thing, the unit markings on the scabbard are also standardized in terms of where they are placed. Now, here you have the regiment on the inside so if I would wear this, would like would be like this. So on the inside, you usually have the uh, regiment. In this case, it's 4LUR, which stands for 4th Landwehr Ulan Regiment. And on the other side, just like on the Sabre, you have the you know, inventory number, which in this case is weapon 166. So it doesn't match up with the Sabre, as I said. So we will never know which unit the Sabre belonged to, but we do know the units this scabbard originally belonged to. Now a little bit more of history. Now the M1869 stands at the end, you could say it's the culmination of a more than two decades process of current revision and sword evolution, cavalry sword evolution that is, in Austria and Austria-Hungary. Because you have a lot of change and a lot of, they went through lots of patterns basically from 1845 onwards. So you've got the 1845, the 1850, the 1858, the 1861, and then the 1869. And this is a universal cavalry saber because the cavalry was completely reorganized in 1869 or between 1867 and 1869. So they got rid of the light and heavy designations. This was a universal cavalry saber and was designated as such. And basically didn't matter whether you were a Tsar, an Ulan, or a Dragoon all would, carry, would be carrying this model of sword. Now, this had a pretty amazing and pretty long service life in that it was introduced in 1869 and it remained in use now inofficially uh, until it's 1908 because that's when the 1904 pattern was rolled out. But officially the 1904 pattern uh, superseded it. But as I said, it remained in use until 1908 at least and we do have some examples I'll show you a picture right now um, that made it into the first world war so this old 1869 cavalry saber did make it into the first world war interestingly and we can see that on some photographs and the picture I just showed you so it did have quite a long service life and that speaks in my view to the quality of the materials and the design because they seem to be happy about it you know, they, they went through several patterns just 10 years. In 10 years, they went through the 1858, the 61, and then this. And the 1861 that came before it was very similar in the overall design and shape. 
with a few different aesthetic cues, but the main difference was the material of the guard and the construction, and the guard also was made of a tougher material. This was actual sheet steel, which was supposed to be a lot tougher than just the, the cast iron they used on the earlier models. So this was something that they apparently ended up with and were happy, happy with. And the blade was also good enough, I guess. So they didn't replace it anymore afterwards. The scabbard was also made of steel in contrast to earlier patterns. And it seems that they ended up with something that they liked and that was quite serviceable after, you know, going through so many patterns in the previous 20, 25 years. Now, I do hope you learned something, you enjoyed this video, and I think I'm gonna make another video just talking about this little sword because it's kind of interesting. But yeah, that was basically all I am able to tell you right now about the uh, M1869 Cavalry Officer's Saber and Cavalry Trooper's Saber. And I'll put the stats of both swords in the description down below so you can look them up for yourself. And yeah, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Thanks again for subscribing. And please do so if you have not, so you're not missing out on my future content. And also, if you're on Instagram, please consider me following over there as well. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night or great day wherever you are and see you in the next one. Bye bye.